Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning. Today I will be discussing cerebrovascular diseases of the CNS. You must have read in your anatomy and physiology classes that the main blood supply to the brain is carried through internal carotid artery which forms the anterior circulation and vertebrobasilar system which forms the posterior circulation and the anterior and the posterior circulation both meet at what is called as circle of villus. So, this is a pictorial representation of the anterior, middle and the posterior circulation to the brain and these are the border zones, the border zones between the anterior and middle circulation and the middle and the posterior circulation are known as the watershed areas and these areas are very very prone to infarction and thus most of the strokes they occur in these areas. So, when we talk about cerebrovascular disease, it is the third leading cause of death after heart attack and the clinical term which is used to classify this disease is called as stroke or brain attack and the clinical presentation is that the patient has sudden development of a neurological deficit caused by abnormalities in the blood supply to the brain which can be global or it could be local. The cerebrovascular diseases can be divided into three main types. The commonest is the hypoxic or ischemic damage to the brain which occurs because of impairment of blood supply. It can be because of intracranial hemorrhage which is mostly due to rupture of a blood vessel. And the third type of cerebrovascular disease is hypertensive cerebrovascular disease and which you can see a combination of the above two. The cerebral hypoxia can be diffuse or it can be focal. Diffuse hypoxia is also known as global hypoxia and the common reason for diffuse hypoxia is either cardiac arrest, shock, severe hypertension and you have very characteristic gross and uh, microscopic findings which I will be discussing. Focal hypoxia to the brain occurs because of cerebral infarction in a typical vascular territory and the Amount of damage which will occur in the brain depends upon the site of the damage, the size of the injury, the type of the lesion and you know duration of reduction of the blood flow and whether the collateral circulation was present in that area or not. So, when we talk about global ischemia to the brain, the causes are most commonly hypotension, hyperperfusion to the brain. And the commonest cause is profound systemic hypotension resulting from cardiorespiratory arrest. So, what we see on gross is that the brain appears swollen and congested. And if you look at you know microscopic findings, they can be divided into three stages. In the acute stage, you see red neurons and neuronal loss and congested uh, dusky brain. In subacute changes, you see macrophage proliferation, capillary proliferation and astrocytic proliferation which comes around 10 days to 2 weeks time and after months to years of tissue injury, there would be removal of the necrotic tissue, loss of organized CNS structures and extensive glyosis can be seen. So, these are some of the pictures. So, this picture H and D stained section is showing you what is called as red neurons. This is due to ischemia to the neurons. There can be loss of neurons also and the zones of the brain which are most vulnerable to necrosis are layer 3, 5 and 6 in the cerebral hemisphere which is known as laminar necrosis. In the hippocampus, it is the CA1 sector which is most prone to injury and in the cerebellum, it is the Purkinje cells which are the most vulnerable zone. So, this is just to show you an infarct which is bilateral in nature and is affected the watershed zones on both the sides because of the global ischemia to the brain. So, these are the zones which are affected in this patient. And now we come on to the subacute changes. In subacute changes, there is disintegration of the brain tissue which occurs within 24 hours and after 
few days there would be macrophage proliferation in the site followed by gliosis now coming on to focal cerebral ischemia so as i've told earlier so focal ischemic necrosis follows decrease in the blood supply or cessation of blood flow to a local area of the brain which is in the distribution of the vessel which is being the most vulnerable vessel in that area and the most affected patients are the patients who are diabetic hypertensive patients patients with arteriosclerosis heart disease or patients who are having hypercholesterolemia so cerebral infarction you know can be of most common cause of infarction is atherosclerosis of the arteries which are supplying the brain and basically it is the thrombosis of the vessel i will be showing you pictures and it could also be because of embolism from the heart mostly or it can be seen in hypercoagulable states infarction can be of two types it can be pale infarct which is associated mostly with arterial thrombosis which is the most common actually cause of cerebral infarction and red infarct or hemorrhagic infarct can be because of number 1 arterial embolism or number 2 venous thrombosis and which are seen in very very typical situations and this is a picture showing the thrombosis of internal carotid artery and arterial thrombosis are much more common in the brain than venous thrombosis and they are actually the ratio is 100 is to 1 so this is a picture showing you a mural thrombus which will actually lead to embolism in the brain and further lead to red infarct so this is how a, an hemorrhagic infarct looks and it involves much more area of the brain as compared to a pale infarct so this is showing you hemorrhagic infarct in a patient with venous thrombosis and typically the hemorrhagic infarcts in patients with venous thrombosis are bilateral if you can see in this picture it's a hemorrhage is in both the right and the left parts of the brain and the most common causes of the venous thrombosis are postpartum the morphological findings would be similar whether it is global or uh, ischemic damage to the brain so whatever area is affected firstly you will have uh, acute neuronal necrosis and presence of red neurons then within 10 days you will see macrophage proliferation capillary proliferation then reactive gliosis and after a few years you will see healing either by formation of gliotic scar or by formation of cavity so these are a few pictures this is showing you acute infarct with presence of neutrophils then you know in later stages there can be edema and then you know extensive reactive glasses occurs after weeks to months of insult to the brain and there can be healing by cyst formation also so this is just a picture showing you extensive macrophage proliferation which also takes part in formation of scar so the clinical features in a local infarction of the brain would be localizing symptoms and the outcome can be you know even the death of the patient or healing by gliosis or cystic cavity formation now coming on to intracranial hemorrhage which can be you know in the intraparenchymal region in the subarachnoid region in the intraventricular region or it could be combination of both so when i talk about intraparenchymal hemorrhage the most important cause of intraparenchymal hemorrhage is hypertension and the pathology of hypertension is very very distinct from other ischemic injuries to the brain the sites in which cerebrovascular disease occurs in hypertensive patients include basal ganglia thalamus pons cerebellum and very rarely you can see lobar hemorrhages also so basically hypertension basically affects the deep lenticular striate branches of the middle cerebral artery and the main pathogenesis is atherosclerosis of these vessels and or there can be highline arteriosclerosis and thirdly there can be formation of what is called as shackard buschard aneurysms so the most important findings in a patient with hypertension are number 1 formation of lacunar infarcts number 2 slit hemorrhages 
Number three, patient can have hypertensive encephalopathy, which is quite rare and seen in patients with malignant hypertension or patient can present with massive hypertensive intracerebral hemorrhage, which again is very, very rare. So, most commonly what you see is lacunar infarcts and slit hemorrhages. So, this is just a pictorial representation of look at this, there is formation of aneurysm in the lenticular striate branches of the middle cerebral artery and these are uh, known as shark cut bushet aneurysms and you know there can be thrombosis also. Now, if there is atherosclerosis of the vessel, what will happen? There would be infarction of the area of the brain which is surrounding that vessel and there would be development of small cavitatory infarcts you can see in this picture. So, there is formation of cavitatory infarct and this infarct is known as a lacunar infarct. So, what would you see under a microscope? You will see area of tissue loss, you can see macrophage proliferation, you can see glasses and later on there can be cavity formation. So, slit hemorrhages are mostly seen in patients who have shakard bushet aneurysms. So, these aneurysms when rupture lead to bleeding. So, whenever there is leakage of blood, this is then, you know, the blood is taken up by the macrophages. So, you will have a slit like area surrounded by macrophages and these are known as slit hemorrhages. So, these patients can also present with hemorrhage which is mostly seen in the area of the basal ganglia or they can also have extensive intraventricular and parenchymal hemorrhage. Acute hypertensive encephalopathy is seen in patients with malignant hypertension. It is characterized by diffuse cerebral dysfunction. Patient will present with headache, confusion, vomiting and convulsions and what you see under microscope is fibrinoid necrosis of the vessels and most of the patients develop high intracranial pressure and they lie in comatose state and most of them die. Then coming on to the third major cause of hemorrhage in the brain, it is known as subarachnoid hemorrhage and the commonest cause of subarachnoid hemorrhage is rupture of a berry aneurysm. So, this is how subarachnoid hemorrhage looks, the dura is congested, you can see engorged vessels. So, this is the upper portion of the top surface of the brain, so this is basal surface of the brain, so you can appreciate subarachnoid hemorrhage in both these pictures. So, now what is berry aneurysm? Berry aneurysm is also you know known as secular aneurysm. It is basically a congenital aneurysm and most of the patients they do not have any clinical symptoms. So, since they are congenital in nature, so basically they are the developmental defects. Patient will not present with any clinical symptoms but mostly because of you know damage to these vessels which have these aneurysms because of turbulent flow of the blood patient in later ages of stages of life like in fifth decade can present with massive bleed so this is how they present so whenever a middle aged patient comes to you with bleed it can lead to a very high mortality and it needs immediate surgical intervention in the form of clipping of the aneurysm so, this is just a picture to show you which areas of the brain can be affected. The mostly these aneurysms occur in the area of either you know anterior communicating artery in the internal carotid artery mostly at the bifurcation sites. So, at the bifurcation of the middle cerebral artery. So, uh, these are the vessels which form the circle of villus. So, these are just gross pictures taken from aneurysm. So, this is very nicely dissected circle of villus showing you three aneurysms. So, again a gross taken from a patient with large secular aneurysm from terminal part of a carotid artery. So, you can have subarachnoid hemorrhages in these patients or you can have massive intraventricular or intraventricular bleed. So, these are pictures showing you intraparenchymal bleed and intraventricular bleed in patients with berry aneurysm. So, other causes of bleed in patients with cerebrovascular disease which are rare as compared to what three causes I have discussed are arteriovenous malformation, cavernomas, capillary telangiectasias or venous angiomas. Thank you.